This video is on the evolution of man and how he discovered numbers from natural numbers to complex numbers layer by layer. Platonic view about mathematics is of the view that there are abstract mathematical objects whose existence is independent of us and our language, thought and practices. Our earliest ancestors, the great apes, 25 million years back, common ancestors to our close cousins, chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans, would understand mathematics like mammals today. Australopithecus, 4 million years back, our first ancestor who was forced to walk bipedal on ground to look out for food due to changing climate for long periods of time, would have been the first to use his fingers to communicate with the rest of the tribe. They were scavengers. Australopithecus gave in to Homo erectus 2 million years back, who was a champion athlete and used tools made of stone for large game hunting. They would have used pebbles to represent larger numbers and also made notches on mammal bones and on cave walls to communicate what he saw to the rest of the tribe. Homo erectus gave into Homo sapiens by 200,000 years and we have evidence of tally bones being used from 80,000 years. Of this, the Lembogo bone has 29 notches and scientists speculate this to be something to track the lunar cycle or used by a woman to track her menstrual cycle. Now one of these tally bones, the Ishango bone dated 24,000 years discovered in 1950 in a fisherman village Ishango in Congo is more than any other tally bone discovered so far. It has three columns of notches arranged in patterns denoting numbers. Many point this to an advanced civilization for the time and some feel that it is an overestimation and could have been a random activity of someone in the tribe. Now, after the last ice age 11,000 years back, man invented agriculture and soon domesticated animals. After settling down along the banks of all major rivers in the old world, it is debated that it was the Chinese who were the first ones to invent agriculture, though they have not left enough evidence. Three major civilizations would come along the Egyptian civilization along the river Nile, the Babylonian civilization along the tigris euphrates river basin, and the Indus Valley civilization along the Indus river in the Indian subcontinent. As civilizations grew in size, they needed large numbers to perform basic arithmetic for daily activities like trade, planning for agriculture, and measuring land by officials to leave taxes and provide rebates in case of devastation of crops as a result of unfavorable climate. Also, on the other hand, for building pyramids and temples for immortality and exploring the skies. Every major civilization, including the Greek and Roman, came up with large numeral systems based on natural numbers. They differed from each other in terms of a few virtues. 1. Base of the numeral system. 2. The total number of symbols. 3. The place value system. And finally, additive and multiplicative systems. Additive system would add the values of independent symbols to arrive at the total value. And multiplicative system would have a combination of two symbols and the resulting value would be arrived by multiplying the values of the symbols in combination. Babylonians and Indians understood the concept of nothing but never had a symbol for it and left a space. The Egyptians were probably the first to have an extensive numeral system. They used objects around them as symbols for 1 to 9 and higher powers of 10. They used a horseshoe, a coiled rope, lotus, pointing finger, tadpole, and astonished man for 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, and finally 1 million respectively. They gave no value 
for the position and followed an additive system. The Babylonians used two symbols, one for one and one for ten. They used this to represent up to sixty and had a place value system with higher powers of sixty. Today it, it is known as hexadecimal number system. In the Indian subcontinent, the Brahmi numeral system was the last one that evolved from the first of numeral systems used by the Mesopotamians. They had 20 symbols and used base 10, followed place value and finally had both additive and multiplicative properties. Chinese numeral system. They had a system which was very similar to the Brahmi numeral system. Base 10, symbols for higher powers of 10, additive and multiplicative, though they were inferior in terms of one important virtue. It was not a place value system. The Greek and Roman numeral system. Now coming to the Greek and Roman numeral system, the Greek numeral system can be considered as the precursor to the Roman numeral system, though it is debated that Romans developed this before coming into contact with Greeks. Both civilizations had symbols for 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and 5 and the Romans had an additional symbol for 50. The, they were both additive systems which gave no value for position. Now during this phase of human history, we used counting boards and abacus to represent and perform arithmetic starting from 2000 BC in Babylonia and being popular throughout the whole world by 500 BC. Abacus was a powerful tool which could even calculate square roots and is still in use today in schools to teach children basic arithmetic. Finally, somewhere in the Eastern world, which predominantly believed in Hindu religion, invented a symbol for nothing and treated it as the, a number itself. This was a giant leap man took, a symbol for nothing, zero. Some parts of the world, even today, do not have a symbol for communicating, no wine bottles for the night. Why Hinduism? The religion that talked about the concept of emptiness, nothingness and shunya. And, it, and shunya was the word given to zero in Sanskrit language the oldest standing language. For a long time, the first zero was thought to be engraved in a temple in Cambodia dated to 683 AD, followed by the Gwalior zero inscribed on the walls of a small temple in Gwalior Fort in Madhya Pradesh, India, dated to 875 AD. But finally, the Indian subcontinent was awarded the discovery of zero after the Bakshali manuscript was dated to 383 AD. The Bakshali manuscript was found in Bakshali village in Peshawar in today's Pakistan. So what makes zero powerful? One, it eliminates the necessity for symbols for higher powers of the base, commonly 10, when the demand for larger numbers increased. It empowers small traders and citizens to perform arithmetic for their daily life, to even keep an account of their money and asset. Earlier counting boards and abacus were served for the learned and officials. Simple multiplication tables were more easier to learn and understand. And most importantly, help man make great inroads into mathematics. Shortly after that, negative numbers were discovered, which formed a symmetry with natural numbers around zero and together they were called integers. Fractions have their roots to the Egyptian civilization. The Egyptians used different parts of the eye of Horus to represent unit fractions 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 8 and 1 by 16 and used combination of these to represent other fractions. Fractions and integers fall under the category of rational numbers. Now 
the category of numbers which are not rational but belong to the real world or real numbers are called rational irrational numbers surprisingly three very important numbers which affect our lives are irrational numbers 1 pi a constant used to measure the circumference and area of a circle surface area and volume of a sphere exponent the natural growth factor in nature which is a compounding factor at a rate of 100% in infinite similarly small periods of time finally the golden ratio we have come to understand that nature follows this ratio in its creation from flowers to patterns of sky cyclones many great artists have also used this ratio in their art and music though not all natural phenomena follows this ratio now together with rational numbers they form the set of real numbers finally after the discovery and study of electrons and other subatomic particles man came to an understanding that these particles are both particle and wave nature to represent the position and to study them we developed a number system with two dimensions these numbers are called complex numbers the numbers of the quantum world now real numbers and complex numbers form the number system in totality as of now we at math pinnacle feel that it was the invention of zero which accelerated developments in mathematics over the last 1500 years when compared to the total period of evolution that has been discussed here